Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. I have an exciting video for you. It's another wear test, so we're gonna test out another high-end foundation and see if it's worth it. Obviously, I am bare-faced. I mean, I have the rest of my makeup on because I just wanted to feel a little bit less Today we're doing a review of the Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation, which is a new high-end foundation. So we're going to test it out, see if it's really good, if it's worth the money, if it's the Holy Grail foundation of 2018. Let's figure this out together. If you are new to my channel, then hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with my videos. And if you end up liking this video, don't forget to hit that like button. It helps me out so much. Without further ado, let's apply this foundation. Alright guys, so we are ready to review this foundation and apply it, but before we do that I just want to give you some details. So it is a new foundation from Dior. I have a sample from Sephora which I recently got this past week. I didn't want to buy the foundation because I am very picky about foundations and right now I have a really nice foundation from the drugstore that I've been using, the Milani 2-in-1 Conceal and Perfect foundation. For high-end foundation to beat it out, it has to be a lot better. So knowing that, let's get into what Dior is saying about this foundation. So firstly, I'm just on my trusty iPhone here. So Sephora is selling the Dior foundation for $64 Canadian and $52 American. The size of the foundation is a 1.3 fluid ounces, which is a little bit better than your normal standard one ounce. There are 24 shades, and which is not bad. So what they say about it, they do say it's a full coverage foundation. It's for sensitive skin types, normal, dry, combination, and oily. I fall under a combination skin. Being a little bit sensitive as well, I really have healing breakouts going on right now. Not really any breakouts. Currently, I usually get my breakouts around that time of the month. And the finish of this is supposed to be matte. This is supposed to be a 24 hour full coverage water-based foundation. So I don't know who's wearing their foundation for 24 hours. But anyway, this is supposed to be Dior's most extreme wear foundation yet. They say it's highly pigmented. It's supposed to feel weightless on the skin. And it's supposed to be an imperceptible second skin for up to 24 hours. Peter Phillips, the creative and image director of Dior Makeup, he says 24 hour means you never need to touch up. So we'll put that to the test, Peter right now. And another thing, I will show a picture of the bottle here. It's like a squeeze bottle, which I don't like at all. The bottle is actually colored in the foundation color shade that you are. So you can't see how much you have left. And then just squeezing the bottle was actually really hard when I did that in store at Sephora. Not my favorite. I'd rather have a pump. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. Let's get into this application. So first I'll let you know my shade. It's the color 21 or 021 because they have three digits linen, which is supposed to be a light with warm yellow undertones. When I swatched it, it seemed to be about the right shade. I just wanted to do a foundation swatch comparison just so you can see how the Dior stacks up to some common foundations. So first, of course, we have the Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation. Secondly, I have my Maybelline Superstay Longwear Foundation in the shade 220 Natural Beige. Next, I have my personal drugstore favorite, which is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation. And this one is in the shade three or light beige. Finally, I have the new NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation in the shade Pudjab. This is my sample from Sephora. We are ready to apply. Let's put some on the back of my hand. Oh, it's really watery. Okay. So spot concealing. Oh, by the way, I have moisturized and prepped my skin. I just used my Benefit Professional just on the nose area. So that is it. I did not prime any parts of the rest of my face. Okay, so I was gonna spot conceal, but now I just have like way too much foundation on the back of my hand. So I'm just going in and kind of just putting it everywhere. We will spot conceal after. So what I will say so far, the foundation feels like very fluid and very watery, but it seems to like glide over the skin nicely. I have my beauty blender. Let's blend and see what this foundation is all about. So I try to tap as much as possible, but then I do pull a little bit just to get the foundation to move around and set evenly. What is that smell? Definitely has a scent to it. Do I know what it is? No, but it reminds me of like grandma's. Well, it's too late, it's on my face, so. The color is pretty good. I would say like for this being a light shade, it's kind of dark. It's not a bad match though. I think we just really just need more foundation. So I'm gonna get more out of my container. They gave me a lot actually, so that was nice of the girl. I also wanted to kind of test it against the NARS Natural Radiant Foundation, which recently came out and that I reviewed in a wear test. I never purchased that foundation because it didn't beat out my Milani. So we could test it against that since they're both two new long wearing foundations. 
I would go through this super fast. Considering how much I put on now, like this is basically, like if it was in a pump, it's like two pumps of foundation. And like normally I go through one pump of Milani foundation and that's good enough because it has such good coverage. And without a pump too, you're squeezing it out of that squeeze bottle and it doesn't come out very easily. I don't know, I think I would go through this foundation super quickly. The smell is weird, but it did go away pretty quickly after it dried that, that first application, or I mean, it didn't completely dry yet, but it was going away. Okay, so now we've applied two layers of foundation and I still have some redness, some discoloration shining through, so I'm definitely gonna go spot conceal and I'm gonna use my finger, I think, just to get a little bit more coverage. The sponge seems to sheer it out quite a bit. So let's try to get these little spots and such covered. I will be putting concealer under my eyes, so this one here I'm not too concerned about. I'm getting a little bit more covered using my finger. I do feel like it does oxidize as well because as I'm applying the spot concealing, it's a little bit lighter than the foundation that's dried underneath. So it does oxidize, so keep that in mind when you're color matching. So I think that's the application of it, guys. I think I'm gonna just put on the rest of my makeup and then we'll see how it looks and how everything applies on top. But for me, this coverage is good. This is basically how I would go out on a normal basis. So zooming you guys in even closer, you are up in my face. It looks good. It does look like your skin, but better. I don't think it looks too cakey. I really like how my forehead looks. It really just looks like my skin. And yeah, it is kind of imperceptible, like they said. Do I wish it had a little bit more coverage right away? Yes. Even now, I think I'm gonna go in with a little bit more foundation, especially here and here, just to get those spots. But I will do that and apply all the rest of my makeup as well. And I will come back and show you the look and then we'll start this wear test. Okay, so I'm back and we've applied the rest of my makeup. I don't know what happened, but I just applied my makeup super easily and super quickly. And I just feel like my skin looks really good. It just looks like my skin, but better. In real life, if you zoomed in super, super close to my skin, it still looks just like my skin. It doesn't look like I have a ton of foundation on it, which I really like. I am actually thoroughly impressed as to where I'm actually considering buying this foundation now. Love this finish. I did not set it with any powder. I just applied my blush, bronzer, highlight, and concealer. Didn't use any powder because I wanted to test out the longevity of this foundation. So guys, it's 11 a.m. right now. We are gonna come back at 11 p.m. So we're gonna do a full 12 hour wear test. This foundation does say it's good for 24 hours. However, 12 hours seems like long enough for me. I'll be thoroughly impressed and I think I will buy this foundation if it can stay like this for the next 12 hours. See you guys later. Hey guys, so we are back for our final and only check-in tonight. It's 11.02 p.m. I've gone through the whole day wearing this foundation. I was quite productive today. I was editing, obviously filming as well. I did some online shopping. I also did all my laundry, cleaned the house, did a bunch of stuff, ordered pizza, which was amazing. So as far as makeup goes, I made zero touch-ups to my face, didn't blot nothing. So just zoomed in so you can get a good look at the foundation. Honestly, it's just a little bit shiny on the nose and the forehead area. The cheek, like none of the highlighter has worn off, which typically it does in a day. And my bronzer's still there. And yeah, I just feel like everything stayed on really well. Even my concealer, usually through the day, it wears down a little bit more and I felt like it stayed on pretty well. There's a little bit of like shine through the T-zone, but then a little bit of like, um, I don't know, it's kind of emphasizing my pores around the middle of my nose here area barely any creasing right here so not bad at all my chin area too looks a little bit like a little cakey but not bad for like for 12 hours of wear guys i'm kind of blown away it looks like it wore away a little bit around my nose i don't know i could have been touching my nose as well so one thing i am going to do while we're zoomed in is i'm just going to take a clean cotton pad this one's by shiseido but you don't need to buy anything high end but just taking a cotton pad and just going to blot the oil away just down the t-zone so it got a little bit of oil off, but it didn't really take off the foundation, which is nice. Like obviously it's a little bit of the foundation slash like 
bronzer on my forehead and stuff, but not much of it came off. Just doing that, I could keep wearing this foundation and I would be totally fine with how it looks. If you did end up finding that you were getting a little oily, I think that could easily be fixed though with just using a setting powder because I didn't do that today. So zoom back out guys, just giving you my final thoughts on this Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation. I really like it. I'm kind of shocked that I like it. It's definitely one of the best high-end foundations that I've tried in the past couple months. I haven't been that impressed with, I've tried the Fenty Beauty, the Too Faced Peach Perfect Foundation, I've tried the NARS Natural Radiant Foundation. Those have been the newest long wear foundations that have come on the market recently, and I haven't really been impressed by any of the formulas for my skin. I do have combo skin. This foundation did oxidize, but it didn't oxidize too much as to where it didn't match my skin tone anymore and it wasn't too orange, so it definitely oxidized a tiny bit, so just be careful, but not a ton. If you want something that's gonna last all day and also give you a natural look, where if you zoom really in close that you don't really notice that you're wearing foundation I think this is a good option and it does seem to wear super well so I'm very impressed I really liked how it wore I liked how it gives you a skin finish but better downsides though are it is expensive um, $64 Canadian $52 American we saw in the application you do have to use a lot of foundation kind of a downfall because it is expensive also the bottle design I don't really like at all I wish it came with a pump that is just my preference I don't know I'm, I'm gonna wear this for a couple more days because this four employee that gave me the sample gave me quite a bit and if I have any crazy updates I will put them in the description box I think this Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation might be my first high-end makeup purchase of 2018. So yeah, that's my final thoughts, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that I helped you make a decision on this foundation or just entertained you. If you end up liking this video, hit that like button. It helps me out so much. And if you want to see more from me, just hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification if you want to get notifications whenever I post. That's pretty much it. I think it's time for me to go to sleep and wash this foundation off. Hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are in the world, and I hope to see you very, very soon in my next video.